Hey, this is Brian Terry in here from the Disability Digest with a video and a message to you about how to hire a Social Security Disability Representative or if you've already hired one or you're thinking about it, the four things that you need to have in place that will reduce your stress and maximize your results. So this is from my experience of working with people since 2006, helping them go through the disability approval process and those that are approved and they have their benefits reviewed uh, and they need to get legal representation to clean it up. I've just seen so many working relationships. So I boiled it down to these things. So, so again, I hope that this is helpful for you in maximizing your results and reducing your stress. At the end, I'll give you a uh, tips to some other links that are helpful. Well, the the common thing that I see is that people hire a, I'm going to use the word representative, which could be a disability attorney or a non-attorney representative uh, that practices in the area of social security disability law. But my point is, a common scenario that I see is that somebody hires an individual um, and they really don't know if they're good, if they're a fit for them, and they don't have um, expectations in place, they don't have accountability in place. So it just, with all of that still looming uncertainty, um, it's difficult for them to really get a handle on it and get the best out of their relationship. So the first thing is, if you are going to hire somebody to work on your case, this is just me and my opinion, you're not off the hook. Your case is not on autopilot. It doesn't matter what they say, what their Google reviews are. Um, they could be a great company, but things could be overlooked. And if you're looking at your disability income and you're a 50 year old and your benefits are worth $20,000 a year, then you're looking at like a, some people say a 350 to $400,000 decision that you're making. So if you just wanna hire somebody and let it go, Maybe you do, but most don't. Okay, so <clears throat> the other thing that that happens here is if you can get a handle on this and follow these tips, then um, you're going to avoid delays, you're going to understand what's going on, and you'll be able to help them navigate through the process. So the common root of the problem really is in the selection process. People don't know what questions to ask. Um, when they're hiring a disability representative. Uh, they, uh, I've seen people just the other day, somebody hired somebody to work on their disability case and when you go to their website, uh, they do dog bites, divorce, um, some criminal defense, and they didn't even have social security uh, disability listed on it. Um, and then you have the other spectrum where there's these large companies that are basically a processing center for just taking your information. There isn't any customized work that is done on your case. So you need to be aware of what, you know, what is it that you're looking for? What do you want to get uh, accomplished from this? So here's the four tips that I want to boil this down to that I feel that you need to, to have to get this right. You need to hire right. And I'm not going to cover that in this video. It's covered in a lot of other videos that I've gone through. Uh, make sure you have the right person that is a fit for you. Ideally, you know, it's somebody that is going to do the custom work. There's like five key things that really need to be done uh, along the way. There's other videos that I cover this. Yeah. Now, keep in mind, for Social Security Disability, the fee is the same. You pay the same price. So if you're going to hire somebody that's not good or you can hire somebody that's good, there's going to be a difference. Now, if you want to hire somebody that's good, I encourage you to have your act together when you go in and you meet with them. Um, understand how to explain that you're disabled in two sentences or less. Understand what it is in general concept that you're going to need to prove uh, so that you're disabled, so that you are going to be somebody that is attractive to work with. You have a good uh, basis and understanding of the process, and this is all information that we provide for you um, for free. Second thing is, I should do it this way, second thing. Accountability, so important. Common mistake that people make is they hire somebody and they really have no idea what should be done. So they, they just hire and like get my benefits. But in my opinion and experience for those that, that, that really execute this correctly is they understand that what needs to be done at each step of the way. 
But when you first start your application, ideally you want to have your medical records requested, reviewed, so somebody un understands the case. They can communicate to Social Security. They can help get doctor support. They can help you get additional evidence. And these are just some of the things that need, in my opinion, to be done to maximize your chances of winning. Three, communication plan. Um, it is really important to have a communication plan. Like, w at what points in time should you expect to be communicated, updated on your disability case? And uh, it doesn't need to be every day. This is a very slow moving process. I understand in the first few weeks where you're getting all your information together, getting on boarded, that there is a need for uh, a high level of activity. But once your application is in the system, the initial application, Social Security expectations are a five to a seven month um, decision process. And then if that's not approved, then there's another five to seven months for the next decision process. And then if it goes to a hearing, it could be 18 to 24 months. So there's big gaps where it's idle. And as a disability applicant, you can follow and track the, all of your case process in your MySSA account. Uh, which is easy to do. So you're not bugging your disability representative. So on this point here, set up some communication expectations. When should we uh, communicate about the case? When should we look at things? Um, you know, if I call you and leave a message, when should I expect to get a response or email or any other communication? If you have that in place, then it's going to be, uh, it'll eliminate, in my opinion, a lot of the stress that people have. One of the common complaints I hear is, I never hear from my disability representative. Well, maybe they should, maybe they shouldn't, I don't know. But if you have that in place, that's it. Last one is approval expectations. And I just kind of laid out some of those. But if you're thinking this is like a magic bullet and you're going to have money in, few, in a few weeks, that's just not it. Uh, there's only so much uh, that anybody can do, even as a disability representative. You are subject to the backlog, to the processing time. Uh, it's just a process. So understand and have your expectations set so that you're not having some, you know, false hopes that, you know, you're going to be getting money soon. Um, that'll help you out. Um, so... I guess my last point to conclude this, I'm not my guess, my last point to conclude is don't put your case on autopilot if you really want to get the most out of this. And I'm, talk, I'm not talking about investing a lot of time, maybe three to four hours using our Social Security Disability Approval Course. Um, and that will allow you to understand like what needs to be done at each step of the way. So you can say, okay, did you do this? Did you do this? Has this been in? Um, and so that you, you have that in place. So that will make a big difference for you. So if you're, you know, watching this video and you're like, oh, I don't know if I hired the right person or yeah, geez, you know, what should I do? Uh, you can look for some of the other videos and resources around this one uh, to help you out. Um, and I'd love to hear your feedback. I'd, maybe there's tips that you have used, things that you've done that you can provide feedback on that would help us and help others, um, you know, and, and share what you've learned. So again, I hope you find this helpful. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, we encourage you to do so and ring the bell uh, so that you get notifications for upcoming messages. And we often have live events uh, commonly once a week where you can come in, get your questions answered, learn from other people. Um, and help you get, keep, and maximize your disability benefits. Thanks for listening. Make it a great day.